hopefully you can see that you should be able to see it so um obviously today as we advertise we're talking a little bit about cold water therapy or cold water immersion and how that relates to you know just generally us normal healthy uh trying to keep healthy and also the population which are more dealing with something like a chronic illness or long covid or something like this So we're going to go through a little bit of things and, you know, a lot of we're, we're talking about this at the moment a lot because I've actually had to tell most of my patients, especially with long COVID, to just back off of the cold therapy a little bit because and we'll go into why that is a little bit later. But um, um, a lot of them are doing this because, you know, cold therapy, the Wim Hof method, it's all really trendy right now. So it's one of the the, the more trendy current things that people are doing to you know, try and take care of themselves, optimize their health, feel better. Um, so a lot of them are jumping on this bandwagon at the moment and implementing these things to try and like, you know, get themselves feeling better, get themselves healthy again. Um, so, you know, it can be a good thing. And we're going to go through some of the benefits of it and how that interacts with the body. And especially if you like, you know, adapted like someone like Wim Hof, you really takes in the benefits of that. However, it can also be a little bit like this it can be quite stressful so jumping into freezing cold water it, it's a stress for the body and that can really cause issues as well especially if we're not set up to deal with more stress um so we're going to really discuss that a lot when it comes to applying this technique to you because just because it's a healthy thing doesn't mean it's the right thing to do right now and right now for you with your situation um so yeah we're going to go through a few benefits the effects on the body when when it's you know more uh, appropriate to do it and really when not to do it or where what i'd advise you to do anyway um so you know generally first thing is like especially cold therapy is really um great for energy a lot of us feel like really energized after it and that's because it has a quite significant impact on our mitochondria so what it seems to happen is cold water immersion, it, it stimulates what's called PGC1 alpha, which is the main um, genetic, um, it's the main genetics that really are um, related to, and the main enzyme that's related to uh, manufacturing mitochondria in the body. So mitochondria will essentially go round in a cycle. So if, if I haven't mentioned this before, en energy is produced in our mitochondria. So we need our mitochondria to be healthy, functioning well, to produce energy well. So when we got fatigue, there's often a mitochondrial dysfunction happening. So mitochondria will essentially go round in a cycle in their, in their lifespan. So they'll switch between this fusion state and being fused and like more of like a whole fused state and it's larger, more efficient at producing energy. And then it will go through this fission state where it sort of splits apart and then gets rid of like damaged old parts of itself. And then it can fuse back together. Uh, so it'll go round and round in this cycle. Um, and PGC1 alpha is, is what is, is, is related to the, the, the primary sort of manufacturing of new mitochondria in the body. So when we have cold water therapy, essentially what we're doing is we're, we're providing quite a big challenge for our mitochondria to produce energy so because we need a lot of energy to maintain warmth within the body so therefore what happens is when we provide that challenge um basically the older less efficient mitochondria will basically get you know they're not able to cope with that so they basically die off and that just leaves more of these more efficient fused mitochondria to take up place of that and do the work and we leave space more in the cell to produce new mitochondria so we end up producing a, be a better quantity of high highly efficient high uh, well functioning mitochondria in the body rather than being some efficient some just a little bit slow and old and, and so cold, th cold water therapy can really help to so boost our mitochondrial function um Another benefit, I think many of us have heard of this is, you know, it's good for our immune system. So what seems to be with the research, like a stress inducing stimuli can be great for our immune system. So it doesn't have to be just infection that stimulates our immune system it can be like just minor stresses. 
Um, and we'll go through into that in a second. But, you know, cold water therapy is one of those minor stresses that can um, activate our immune system to do some work. So it tends to be that we see that um, it can increase things like T cells, especially our, ki uh, our, killer, our killer cells, our NK, our NK cells, um, which are really good at like hunting down um, viral cells, hunting down tumor, tumors and cancer cells and getting rid of them. So they're really good at upregulating some of this side of our, of our immune system. So it seems to be that the, the cold immersion stimulates a little bit of stress, like we said, and stimulates the production of catecholamines, which are like our stress dealing hormones, adrenaline, cortisol. So when that happens, um, you know, cortisol in itself and, and catecholamines, they, they really can act as quite an anti-inflammatory. So they will basically counteract inflammation in the body. So, you know, we all know that stress is, um, it, it suppresses our immune system. And this is exactly where we see this is, you know, our, our stress hormones go up. It therefore suppresses some immune activity, despite what I just said about a boost some up. So it has this sort of more regulatory effect. Some parts of our immune system will boost up uh, and some parts of it will, will decrease. So uh, things like cytokines can get um, more uh, suppressed with higher cortisol which can be a good thing. Um, so it can have an anti-inflammatory effect with that coming up. So, you know, as, but as the body, you know, it needs to start warming up and dealing with being cold and it really boosts up its meta meta metabolic rate. And that's what causes the activation of our immune system. So we, we see quite a few different changes happening in, within the body when we, we, we induce this sort of stressful event upon ourselves. We get, you know, stress production, um, stress uh, stress dealing systems switch on uh, metabolic rate speeds up considerably that's why it's really you know quite effective for weight loss um uh and then you know parts of our immune system pick up again um like the t-cells and the nk cells which we discussed um and then another side of this is how you know we it, again with inflammation so deal with inflammation and to deal with what we call the oxidative stress of inflammation we need antioxidants to counteract that and i think we went went through this a little bit um two weeks ago when we talked about sugar um we need antioxidants to mop up the the oxidative stress that happens so this what happened you know tends to be antioxidants especially something called nrf2 which is the sort of main pathway for upregulating um antioxidants in the body our antioxidant swiss system switching on it comes sort of sort of through mostly through this nrf2 pathway um and it seems to be with nrf2 it switches on in response to a little bit of stress so cold water therapy can be one of these things that increases our antioxidant production in the body which therefore helps with inflammation um and also some other antioxidant enzymes that deal with like glutathione production um and all the rest of it so um we do need some stress to be healthy uh you know and you know th these are minor things so actually what we see is with th foods like broccoli garlic turmeric they're actually deemed healthy for us because they do inge induce a little bit of stress on the body um, and it's in that little bit of stress that provides like a stimulus for our body to overcome. It provides a little bit of a challenge for our body to overcome and adapt to. And that's what really gets our body thriving. Um, it really doesn't do well with no challenge. Our body's been like evolving and thriving and adapting for thousands of years uh, through, you know, stress, like being exposed to the outdoors, no shelter, hunting for food periods of starvation so you know we're really evolved and adapted for this um so some of these foods that have sort of become our sort of health foods are because they induce a little bit of this challenge so they increase they basically provide just a little bit of inflammation and that little bit of inflammation is enough to switch on our anti-inflammatory systems or antioxidant systems so in broccoli it's the the chemical we call sulforaphane um curcumin in turmeric this is what activates nrf2 antioxidants in the same way you know fasting can be a little bit of a stress for the body which we're really designed to have 
we're not designed to consistently eat food all day, every day for our whole life. We're just not set up for that. Um, so fasting can be one way that induces a little bit of this stress. Um, you know, removing the food gives us the body a bit of time and space to sort of do its cleanup work, um, do its repair. So it can't particularly do that, especially in the gut when it's always dealing with food. Um, but fasting itself, it just induces that little bit of stress again to turn on NRF2, to turn on antioxidants, to deal with inflammation. And then again, exercise. So exercise can be a little bit of stress. Um, of course, you can overdo it. And this is what we're talking about is this balance between just enough stress, but not too much. Um, so exercise when done well and done in moderation and not too much can can really um, provide a lot of this um, this beneficial stimuli. And I'll talk about, you know, overdoing stress, overdoing exercise more often now, because it seems to be we're all getting way more extreme with what we do. So it's, it's not just exercising two or three times a week. Um, a lot of people are really, you know, burning themselves in the gym every day. Uh, and that's when it becomes too much stress and it provides too much inflammation. Um, but again, you know, of course, there's the side of population which are just they do need to move a little bit more. So, yeah, we need stress to be healthy. So as um, displayed with this sort of curve, we with a certain amount of stress, we do get healthier. We reach more peak performance. We function better because we're a body switched on and adapting and, and uh, overcoming these challenges we're giving what like it's designed to do. Um, however, too much can lead us to being sick, leads to chronic illness, uh, burnouts um, and all these detrimental things that come with too much stress so you know when we don't have enough stress we're in this sort of lame lazy switched off mode and this is really where stress can be a beneficial thing for people think people that are maybe a little bit overweight um they're not doing enough they're too comfortable in their life and this is where a lot of us are now is you know we've got all this um this um stuff around us that makes life easier um i'm trying to think of the word begins with c um names for the things that make life easier like washing machines and stuff to take all the work away from us we can sit in our warm homes without any exposure to cold the nasty weather outside we're super comfortable and that's not what our body is designed to do it's designed to have a little bit of stress so in doing that we can move up into more of this healthy range um so that sort of leads when not to do it, when it becomes too much. And when, when things like cold therapy aren't that beneficial. So, you know, if you're a little bit overweight, you're too comfortable in life, you're not got enough stimulation, that's really the best time to do cold water therapy to induce a little bit of stress there and get your body going again. Um, and this is sort of why it sort of blends in with a lot of the research shows it's really good for like my, um, good for for depression um, and neurological issues, and that links again to the the mitochondrial section. So, you know, our our brain, our nervous system are one of the most energy demanding structures in the body. So, if we're not producing energy well, that's really where those symptoms start to show up, um, where that where lack of energy starts to show up with the brain, nervous system. So, depression neurological type issues that's really where mitochondrial dysfunction comes in and inducing a little bit of stress to get the mitochondria going again can be really beneficial so if you're a little bit overweight a little bit depressed not too comfortable cold water therapy is great um however when not to do it is when you've just got too much stress already it can be too it can be you know cold water therapy is another additional stressful strain upon the body um I and mean, if you're dealing with a lot of it already Adding another bit on, despite being touted as healthy, isn't beneficial because it just pushes you further down this way. So especially if you're dealing like if you're really stressed at work, you're approaching burnout. This can really perpetuate that um, and sort of links into our discussion on long COVID. So, um, you know, again, it sort of depends on the person a little bit um you know there's obviously a lot of benefits of cold water therapy that could benefit this population so you know it can regenerate our mitochondria it can 
provide some immune modulation. It can be anti-inflammatory, provide more antioxidants. So it can be really beneficial for some people. Um, another thing is that it's been shown to increase autophagy in the body. Um, same as fasting, we, we get this autophagy effect, which is essentially um, the body cleaning out the system. It's getting rid of old uh, debris, old cells, um, getting rid of toxins, regenerating, repairing. Um, so cold therapy can be part of this. And that's really, I think, where the conversation has come into long COVID because there's a lot of discussion around the spike protein of long of um, of COVID or SARS-CoV-2 or through the vaccine, how it can linger around in the body. And it's been shown to uh, be persistent in the body for up to 15 months now, much longer than it was ever said could be possible from the pharmaceutical companies, but it seems to be happening. So uh, inducing some autophagy has been promoted as some way of dealing with that to clean out some of the spike protein, clean out viral cells. Um, and that's, this is where it's come into this long COVID discussion. However, the flip side of, of that is that a lot of this population are not dealing with stress well. Um, they've got, from my experience from working with quite a few, is there's a lot of adrenal dysfunction. Um, they, they really get flare-ups of palpitations and mast cell type uh, symptoms in response to just a little bit more strain on the body. Um, they can't tolerate any different, any stresses or strains well at all. So, you know, chucking them into cold water doesn't seem like the best idea when they're not dealing well with stress. You know, if we reflect on, on this population, but all of us through this like last couple of years, there's been so much stress. Um, and I don't think we we give that enough time to think about actually what we've just been through. I think it's going to take some time to process. But the amount of stress we've been under for so long, that's playing a, a big role in this. Um, so inducing more stress right now, again, pushes you down the other side of the curve. Um, and then the other side of the long COVID picture is this autonomic dysfunction. So they don't, you know, a lot of cold intolerance. They, they're not adapting well to the environment. So for me, I, I've really steered people away from this to begin with. Um, and what I've found more beneficial is at first you get them supported with the antioxidants, bring down the inflammation with other means, try and get a hold of the immune system a little bit so they're more stable. And then upon that, you can start building in some more of like cold water therapy gently. Um, so to begin with, maybe it's, it's actually more better is to, is to be a bit comfortable. The body has been through a lot of stress. It's dealing with tons of inflammation. Um, it needs some stability and comfort to, to start regenerating, not more stress. That can come a little bit later when people, when people are a little bit more stable, they can start implementing these things in that a little bit of a challenge can provide that stimulatory effect on the body, which provides those benefits we talked about. So it's applying to you, the person in your situation, how severe, how unstable, how, you know, how, un, how uh, much is going on with you right now before you start deciding jumping on things like cold water therapy. So maybe that applies to some of you here. Maybe it doesn't, but I'm sure that apply. You know, you can take some things from this talk about cold therapy, um, how that might help your situation. Um, but if you have any questions, please uh, 